Good afternoon and welcome to St. Agnes Parish. Today we celebrate the feast of the baptism of our Lord and we have the following announcements. Please add Phyllis Lowry and Sam Bartuska to the bulletin's prayer corner. Please pray for the repose of the soul of Rose Marie Anderko, who passed away recently. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord, and let the perpetual light shine upon her. May she rest in peace. Amen. May her soul and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. Please consider joining the tens of thousands of pro-lifers at the annual National March for Life in Washington, D.C. On, on, on Friday, January 21st. See the bulletin article for further details. Next weekend, our local Knights of Columbus Council will sponsor its annual Donations for Vocations to raise funds for the support of the education of our seminarians. See the bulletin for further details. There will be two opportunities to publicly pray the rosary in church this week. Monday, the Rosary for America at 6 p.m., and Wednesday, the 13th of the month Rosary at 3 p.m. Please take a moment to check your electronic devices to make sure that they are on silent mode. Please stand and together let us recite the evangelization prayer. Let us pray. Loving Father, you called each of us and gave your only Son to redeem us in your faithfulness. You sent the Holy Spirit upon us to complete the mission of Jesus on this earth. Give us the courage to speak his name to those with whom we are close, and the generosity to share his love with those who are far from him. We pray that every person throughout the world will be invited to know Jesus as Lord and Savior and experience his all-surpassing love. May that love transform every element of our society we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And our gathering song can be found in Breaking Bread, number 651, Come to the River, number 651, in Breaking Bread.
name of the Father and the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, love of the Father and fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always. And with your spirit. My sisters and brothers, as we are washed clean of sin in baptism and renewed every liturgy to be a person, people of faith and virtue, let us nonetheless call to mind our sins and ask the Lord to forgive us that we might continue to celebrate his good news and share it with others. Lord Jesus, you give comfort to your people and expiate our guilt by your death on the cross. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you gave yourself to cleanse away our sins and make us your own people, eager to do good. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the beloved Son of the Father and will baptize us with the Holy Spirit and fire. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in, in the, the highest, highest and, and on earth, earth peace, peace to people, people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless, bless you, we adore you. of the world have mercy on us you take away the sins of the world receive our prayer you are seated at the right hand of the father have mercy on us for you alone are the Christ with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who, when Christ had been baptized in the river Jordan, and as the Holy Spirit descended upon him, solemnly declared him your beloved Son, grant that your children by adoption reborn of water and the Holy Spirit, may always be well-pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Comfort, give comfort, comfort to my people, says the, your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her service is at end. 
her guilt is expiated. Indeed, she has received from the hand of the Lord double for all her sins. A voice cries out, In the desert prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the wasteland a highway for our God. Every valley shall be filled in. Every mountain and hill shall be made low. The rugged land shall be made a plain. The rough country a broad valley. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. And all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Go up in, onto a high mountain, Zion, herald of glad tidings. Cry out at the top of your voice, Jerusalem, herald of good news. Fear not to cry out and say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. Here comes with power the Lord God, who rolls by a strong arm. Here is his reward with him, his recompense before him. Like a shepherd, he feeds his flock. In his arms, he gathers the lambs, carrying them in his bosom and leading the ewes with care. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Send forth your spirit, O Lord, and renew the face of the earth. Send forth your spirit, O Lord, and renew the face of the earth. Send forth your spirit, O Lord, and renew the face of the Spirit, O Lord, and renew the face of the earth. Bless the Lord, O my soul, Lord God, how great you are, wrapped in a garment of glory and might, clothed in light as in a robe. Your spirit, O Lord, and renew the face of the earth. Send forth your spirit, O Lord, and renew the face of the earth. Lord my God, great are your works. In wisdom you made them all. Rich is the earth and filled with your life. Bless the Lord, oh bless my soul. Send forth your spirit, O oh Lord, and renew the face of the earth. Send forth your spirit, O oh Lord, and renew of your creatures look to you to give them their food in time you give with abundance they gather it up by your hands they have their fill send forth your spirit O Lord and renew the face of the Spirit, O oh Lord, and renew the face of the earth.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to Titus. Beloved, the grace of God has appeared saving all and training us to reject godless ways and worldly desires and to live temperately, justly, and devoutly in this age as we wait the blessed hope, the appearance of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to deliver from all lawlessness and to cleanse for himself a people as his own, eager to do what is good. When the kindness and generous love of God our Savior appeared, not because of any righteousness deeds we had done, but because of his mercy, he saved us through the bath of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit, whom he richly poured out on us through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that we might be justified by his grace and become heirs in the hope of eternal life. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Our reading for the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The people were filled with expectation, and all were asking in their hearts whether John might be the Christ. John answered them all, saying, I am baptizing you with water, but one mightier than I is coming. I am not worthy to loosen the thongs of his sandals. He will baptize you with Holy Spirit and fire. After all the people had been baptized, and Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. A voice came from the heaven. You are my beloved son. With you, I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, today we bid farewell to the Christmas season. This is also called the first Sunday in Ordinary Time. Many of us, probably, I haven't done it yet. We'll get there probably Monday or Tuesday coming up. We've put away our Christmas decorations for another year. Hallmark is probably stocking their shelves with Valentine's Day cards. But we Catholics march to a beat of a different drum. We stubbornly have continued the celebration of the birth of our Savior until today, baptism of the Lord. 
This event will be the turning point in the life of Jesus. One of several, but a big one. First, his identity is affirmed. When the Heavenly Father says, you're my beloved son with whom I am well pleased, or with you I'm well pleased. Now, he's had 30 years of, of quiet, um, basically um, undistinguishable experience. We don't know what's going on in Nazareth, but obviously he's, he's deep in prayer. He's learning the scriptures. He's learning the history of his people. We know what, and 12 years old in the temple in Luke's account, we, he's precocious. He is, knows there's something about him that's very, very different. I must be in my father's house. And here, the Heavenly Father affirms, you are my beloved son. And they meant that in a way, you're not like any other beloved son. You are the beloved son. And that was an affirmation of Jesus. And the second part, would he begin his act of ministry? In the verses that follow today's gospel, Luke writes that Jesus was led into this desert by the Spirit that he had just received into the, to face temptations by the devil. He refused the lies of the tempter, and it says in Luke's gospel, quote, returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit, and the news of him spread throughout the whole region. So what's he doing? Well, he's, he's preaching, teaching about the kingdom. He's healing the sick, casting out evil spirits. Okay. And therefore, he's begun his active mission to bring salvation to the world. Luke also says, well, I did that already. Okay. The baptism of Jesus makes us think of our own baptism. And every time we have baptism, I ask you, to, do you know the date of your baptism? And if you, I mean, who knows the date of your baptism? Put them up there. Not too many. I won't ask you, okay? Mine's June 9th, 1946. <laughs> oh, a few days ago. Anyway, St. Christ the King Church leads England. You've heard that before, but we should know our baptismal date. We really, should, we should. Because we're born, that's important, into the world. But most, one of the most important dates of our entire human existence is baptismal day. Because what that means, which we'll talk about in a moment here. Okay. On that day, we receive our identity. Because the Heavenly Father silently but really speaks those words that he spoke to his son. He says to you or to me, you are my beloved son, my beloved daughter. With you, I am well pleased. We've just been conceived and just come into the world by mom and dad's love and by his saying yes to our immortal soul. That's all we've done. We just exist, but we're beloved, and he cherishes us. So we're no longer just creatures created uh, by God in love, like any other creature that walks the face of the earth. We're beloved children of God. He desires a filial father-child, father-child, father-adult child relationship with us. What other, what other religion besides Christianity dares call the supreme being, God. Islam doesn't. Buddhism doesn't. Confucianism doesn't. Okay. Judaism doesn't, even though we're semantically we're rooted there. Adonai, Yahweh, not Father. That's why when Jesus used the word Abba, Aramaic or Hebrew for Father, it was very different, very warm, but also unusual to address God so personally, so familiarly, that word, so intimately. And we have the same privilege to approach the, the supreme divine source of all that is and say, Dad. With great reverence, but Dad. That's what Abba means. Wow. Okay. But there's more. In the rite of infant baptism, which most of us are baptized as infants, the priest or deacon says these words as he anoints the child immediately after baptism. I'll quote them. God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, has just freed you from sin, original sin, given you a new birth by water and spirit, okay, and welcomed you into his holy people. He now anoints you with a chrism of salvation. As Christ was anointed priest, prophet, and king, so may you live, may you live always as a member of his body, sharing everlasting life. As Christ was anointed priest, prophet, and king, it means we are anointed priest, prophet, and king. What does that mean? You say, 
what? I'm a priest, I'm a prophet, I'm a king, really? Or a queen, to respect the, the sex, okay? What's, what's explored about what this means? A priest, what's a priest? Well, now there's priesthood, ministerial priesthood, ordination, and what we call the priesthood of the faithful, which the church teaches, especially in Vatican Council. So a priest is one who, where am I here? There we go, wrong side of the page. <laughs> a priest who makes sacrifices to, uh, to God on behalf of the people. He's the mediator between God and the people. He prays for the people. That's more a ministerial role. But a, but a priestly role, there's two things for, I think, a typical layperson. One, intercessory prayer and participation in the sacrifice of Mass. Intercessory prayer. Okay. We all do that. We intercede for the sake of another before God. Okay. Catholic parents, when your child's little, you, I'm sure you're praying with them at nighttime as they go to bed. And I'm sure you intercede for them to God quite often. Okay. But I think here the call to intercession or prayer, besides just between you and the Lord, is let the person you're praying for hear your prayer. As the child begins growing up, even to adulthood, what stops a parent from praying intercessory prayer? Oh, yes, when the child's not in their presence, but when the child is in their presence. That's a priestly function, to pray intercession for somebody. Children, any children here? <laughs> pray intercessory prayer for your parents. Pray to God that they be wise parents, good parents, loving parents, helpful parents, that they discipline you properly and helpfully. Okay. And ch children growing up can always intercede for their parents. Yes, again, going to prayer, personal prayer, mass, visits to church, but also just, hey, mom, dad, I'm going to pray, pray over you. If mom or dad is, if you're you know, an older parent, why not, when you're a seed for them, Hold their hand and say, Lord, I'm going to pray for my mom and dad for their well-being, for their strength, for their courage, for their acceptance. Whatever they need to just pray intercessory prayer. Not just quietly, yes, publicly with them. There's a different power there, okay? Husbands, do you intercede for your wives? Wives, do you intercede with your husbands? Again, yes, in the silence of your heart, but how about also with each other? Intercede, pray to God on behalf of your spouse. That's, that's priestly, and you're anointed to do that. Therefore, you have the Spirit to do that. You can do it because the Spirit's in you. The Spirit works in you if you, we open our hearts to that. Families, obviously intercede for each other, but intercede for other families. And if you happen to be with other families, perhaps if, they have the, if they're open to it, you pray together about something, intercede together for something. Okay? Intercessory prayer. Now, most of us do that quietly, but I'm just challenging us to maybe go beyond that to doing it out loud with the person for whom we're praying to God. Okay. The second one was sacrifice of the Mass. Now you're here, so you're, this is a priestly function, not just the material, you need me, you need the priest, ministerial priesthood for the Eucharist to happen, no question, but you have a priestly function. Last week I talked about that, that we participate, we offer Jesus to the Father. Listen to the prayer right before, right after the gifts, you know, gifts up on the altar. I pray over the bread, pray over the wine, not the consecration. Then I say, my sisters and brothers, um, let's see, that our sacri my, my sacrifice and yours, there, my, my sisters and brothers, let us pray, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. What's our sacrifice? Jesus as well as our own offering of self along with his. Well, that's, a, that's a priestly function to offer sacrifice. Okay? So, intercessory prayer, priestly, um, the, participate in Mass. Vast numbers, of, so all our Catholics that don't come to church regularly, whatever it is, 25, 75%, 80%, 85%, I don't know, depends where you are in the country, are not exercising the primary priestly function which is to offer Christ at Mass. Just so you know. Okay, we're also prophets. What's a prophet? A prophet speaks God's word. The Spirit says, 
this has to be said. It's a difficult one. Read about the prophets. They all get in trouble. Often are killed because they speak truth to power. They disturb people. They disturb the status quo. They're speaking God's word. They're speaking truth. Often it's judgment. Often it's consolation. But they get in trouble. Think about Jesus. Okay? So I mean, that's kind of like, whoa. Are, do people know we're Catholic? Do they know you're Catholic? I don't mean in their face kind of thing. I mean, do, this, do they know you're Catholic? If something as simple as going to a restaurant, do they know you're Catholic because you make the sign of the cross before you, when you say grace before meals? It's such a simple thing. It's prophetic. It's prophetic. You're declaring, I'm Catholic. I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Simple gesture. No big show. Just, but we're afraid to do that, aren't we? But that's, we are. But, we, but it's prophetic, and you, we are anointed. You were anointed. I mean, you're anointed to be prophetic in that sense. At your workplace, there's just something about you where people, you don't participate in the gossip or whatever's the, back, the, the machinations behind the scenes. You will have integrity. And people know you have integrity. And you actually are there. Maybe you can say, as you get to know someone, you can say, may I, can I pray about that with, for you? Or may I pray with you? I dare say in many places in the workplace, you will get people saying, please pray for me. Or pray with me. And not all, but I think a lot. From what people tell me. If you risk saying, may I pray for you? Or may I pray with you? If there's a moment of privacy and things like that. That's prophetic. It's also intercessory, but it's prophetic. Because you're saying, I I'm a believer in Jesus Christ, and that makes a difference, and I'm going to offer the gift of prayer for you. It sticks out your neck, I'm no question about it, but it's prophetic. It's prophetic. Okay? And again, it says in, uh, now, it says in 1 Peter 3.16, um, always be ready to give an explanation to anyone who asks for your reason for your hope, but do it with gentleness and reverence keeping your conscience clear. So if you are maligned or mocked or made to feel, tried to be shamed, those who defame you, your good conduct in Christ will put them to shame. Okay. So again, um, how are we to defend our faith unless we know our faith? And that's, I know that's a challenge and a half. But I'm going to ask a question if you're actually still in the workplace. Would you keep your job with the knowledge you have of the Catholic Church? If you made an equivalent, knowledge I have of the church would be the same as the knowledge I have of my position at work. Could you keep your job? That's a, that's a, I'm just, that's, that's me, the prophet, saying to you, could you keep your job? You, can you speak of faith and have a knowledge of the faith sufficient to gently, it says in, in, um, with, um, with reverence and gentleness, to defend the faith. You say, ooh, then, as Bishop Barron said, you have two eyes and a brain. Read, study, so you can be a good prophet. Okay. The last one's kingly. Kingly. I think I'm just going to say it's self-mastery. Okay. We have, we want to align our, our mind, our wills, our passions, which we have good and bad passions, you know, we want to have, we want to be, what we do outside, we want to reflect what's going inside. So we want our inside, our spiritual life, to be such that we're seeking God's will, we're people of prayer, we do study the word, we, sac we celebrate the liturgy, we work on uh, our faults, we forgive, we seek forgiveness. All the stuff we're supposed to be about as followers of Jesus, that's growing at self-mastery. So in a sense, I'm becoming kingly or queenly over my own self. This is not ruling over other people or bossing or being power hungry. It's, it's being, bringing my own journey under the control of God's will and Holy Spirit. And we have that capacity to do that because we are anointed priest, prophet, and king or queen. And the second, last thing is, well, we receive our identity in baptism. I don't know if we expanded on that. 
but also receive our mission. And our mission is to love God with all our mind, heart, soul, and strength, to love our neighbor as ourselves, and to make disciples of all nations. And notice Jesus had the Spirit come upon him. And, his, and that was the power in which he did what he did. So if our Lord and Savior, who is God, yet human, in his humanness needed the Spirit, so do we. So let's ask for the Spirit. My sisters and brothers, let us profess the faith. I believe, I believe in one, one God, God, the Father Almighty, Almighty maker of heaven and earth, of all, all things visible and invisible. And invisible. I, I believe in one Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ the, the only begotten Son, Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true, true God from true God, God begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess, I confess one, one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With gratitude in our hearts for the gift of baptism, let us exercise our priestly dignity and intercede to the Father on behalf of the church, the world, and our community. Please respond. Let the earth ring out with joy, for you have come that all members of the church will embrace their baptismal identity as priests, prophets, and kings. Let us pray. Let the earth ring out with joy, for you have come. For civil leaders at all levels of authority, that the Holy Spirit will enlighten their minds and hearts to govern accordingly to the truth about human nature and community. Let us pray. Let, Let the, the earth, earth ring out with joy, joy for, you for you have come. That all who are burdened by physical or emotional difficulties may receive God's healing touch and mercy. Let us pray. Let, Let the, the earth, earth ring, ring out, out with joy, joy for, you for you have, have come. come. For those who live in the darkness of sin, that the mercy of Jesus will bring them to repentance and conversion. Let us pray. Let the, Let the earth, earth ring out, out with, with joy, joy, for you, for have, you come. have come. For ourselves, that the Holy Spirit will renew our baptismal commitment to keep God's commandments as Christ taught us, by loving God and neighbor and sharing the good news by our words and deeds. Let us pray. Let, Let the, the earth, earth ring out, out with joy, joy for, for you, you have, have come. come. For all those who have died, especially for John and Mary Perger, May they join with all the saints and angels in offering joyous praise to God for all eternity. Let us pray. Let, Let the, the earth, earth ring out with joy, joy for you, for you have, have come. come. Come, Holy Spirit, renew the hearts of the faithful and enkindle in us the fire of your love. Go forth, Holy Spirit, and we shall be recreated. You shall renew the face of the earth. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Our song during the presentation of gifts can be found in Breaking Bread, 
Number 648, Flow River Flow. Number 648 in Breaking Bread. Bless you, Lord God of all creation, who given us we have this bread to offer. Through the earth, work in the hands of us the bread of life. Sacrifice in your sight to please do. Cleanse me of all my sin. my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, the offerings we have brought to honor the revealing of your beloved Son, so that the oblation of your faithful may be transformed into the sacrifice of him who willed in his compassion to wash away the sins of the world, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, 
For in the waters of the Jordan you revealed with signs and wonders a new baptism, so that through the voice that came down from heaven we might come to believe in your word dwelling among us. And by the spirits descending in the likeness of a dove, we might know that Christ your servant has been anointed with the oil of gladness and sent to bring the good news to the poor. And so the powers of and so with the powers of heaven we worship you and constantly on earth and before your majesty without a hand. We hear claim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full, full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. May call thee therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray 
that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring it to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Larry, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Agnes, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. My sisters and brothers, at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come thy, will thy will be done, done on earth as it is, as it in, is heaven. in heaven. Give us, Give us this day our, our daily bread, bread and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as, as we forgive those who trespass, trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but in the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer each other a sign of his peace. Lamb of God, you take, take away, away the, the sins, sins of the world, world. have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. We invite everyone to come forward in procession, but if you cannot receive the Lord, just go like this. The extraordinary minister will say, may the Lord bless and keep you, and I will bless you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not worthy that you, you should, should enter, enter under, under my, my roof. roof. But only, only say, say the, the word, word and, and my soul, soul shall be healed. healed.
Our communion song can be found in Breaking Bread, number 344, Spirit and Grace, number 344 in Breaking Bread. Let us continue in breaking bread with number 551, Sacred Silence.
We are celebrating a 50th wedding anniversary, so I'm going to invite the uh, loving couple to come forward. That is John and Patricia Gambita. There they are. John and Sheldon is back there somewhere. They're very faithful. They take go to Redstone. What day of the week? First Friday, right? And offer a communion service and offer the Lord there. Pat supports them. Right. Pat. They were married 50 years ago at St. Michael's in Braddock. How many kids you have? Two daughters. Two grandsons. Two granddaughters. And a great grandson and great granddaughter. Okay, very good. Everyone, you know what to do. Put your hand toward them. You may hold hands, you know. Let's get loving here. Almighty, eternal God, you have so exalted the unbreakable bond of marriage that it has become the sacramental sign of your son's union with the church as his spouse. Look at favor now upon Pat and John, whom you united in marriage 50 years ago today. As they ask for your help even now, and protection of the Blessed Virgin Mary, they pray that in good times and in bad, they will grow in love for each other, that they will, re they will resolve to be of one heart in the bond of peace. Lord, in their struggles, let them rejoice that you are near to help them. In their needs, let them know that you are there to rescue them. In their joys, let them see you are the source and completion of every happiness. We ask this through Christ the Lord, who lives and reigns forever and ever, Amen. You may kiss the bride. Whoa. Wow. Congratulations. A little passion there, brothers and sister. That's good. All right. <laughs> Let's rise for prayer. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we help me entreat your mercy, O Lord, that faithfully listening to your only begotten Son, we may be your children in name and in truth through Christ the Lord who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Saint Michael, the archangel, defend, defend us, us in battle. battle. Be, be our defense against, against the wickedness and snares of the devil. devil. May, may God, God rebuke him, we humbly pray. pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, thrust in the hell Satan, the other evil spirits, who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go forth in peace. Glorify the Lord through your lives. Thanks be to God. Have a good... First week in ordinary time. Sorry about this noise. Thank From Breaking Bread, let us go forth singing number 650, River of Glory. We will sing verses 1 and 4. That's number 650 from Breaking Bread. Darkness is banished. Night
light shine. 